Welcome to Circadian Seeker, hosted by Johnny Seek. But this is the Celebrity Mental Health Podcast, or I say it's okay to not be okay. And if you have the same answer as me, then before we get to today's guest, please subscribe to Circadian Seeker whilst you're listening. And at the end of the episode, leave a five star rating and a review. And let me tell you about my guest today. My guest today is not just a beauty school dropout, she has been taking the theatre world by storm over the past five years. First in Heavens the Musical, then Waitress, and now starring as the lead in Greece as Sandy at the Dominion Theatre, where her solo of hopelessly devoted to you deserves a standing ovation nightly. So without further ado, as we go together in this conversation, I'm delighted to welcome to Sikininska, the one that I want during a summer night, actress Olivia Moore. Hello, Olivia. Hello. Thank you very, very much for having me. Well, it's my absolute pleasure. I, what I So I saw Grits. I've seen you twice, actually, in Greece, and I, overall I've seen the show four times now. And it's one of those shows that is just so feel good. I thought because it's a mental health podcast and because... When we're focusing on mental health, especially during the summer, we're a bit like, oh, I don't know how I feel about September. And then it's nearly Christmas. I feel, let's get you on to talk about Greece and why you should go and see it for your mental health, just so that you can feel a bit more positive in your outside. Because that's what Greece is. It's a feel-good show, isn't it? The music is fantastic. I mean, it's guaranteed to make you want to get up and sing and dance. Um, so that's one reason alone. Um, but also, I think Greece is the type of musical that a lot of people can relate to. I know that a lot of people go to the theatre to try and just have an two hours, three hours, however long the show is, just to break away from everyday life. Um, but sometimes people actually quite enjoy being able to see themselves up on stage and reflect back on, you know, on themselves. And sometimes things can kind of click for people and it can really be quite therapeutic. So kind of whatever, whatever you are after, Greece is such a fantastic show. And I think it's you know, especially for mental health, I think it's one that will definitely, definitely make you leave feeling, feeling good. But you feel empowered as well, because you're in control. And why I love Greece and a show like Mamma Mia, for example, is you know the beginning, the middle and the end. And so when you come to Greece and you've got the big Greece song, you go all the way through, you know, kind of the markers of every single song way out. So, you know, for example, look at me, I'm Sandra D, beauty school dropout. You know, they're going to be in the first half and you know, that's going to be Sandy's trying to get in with the girls and then you know you're going to have at the end we go together and then you know you're going to have a big uncle where sometimes you watch a show and you're like especially if it's a new one and you go well I don't know what the songs are I don't really know what up to and you start kind of checking your phone you're going is it nearly the interval it's now 50 and now I've only got 45 minutes left mm -hmm. and you're kind of counting up and counting down whereas Greece kind of keeps you in check so even if you're mentally not feeling that great and you go there at least you feel like you've got in, you're in control because you've got that schedule already ingrained in your head Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we have made a few changes to kind of some of actually some of the, the songs are in a slightly different order. However, like you said, I feel like because people do have kind of an expectation of the storyline, the storyline is very much the same. We've changed a few elements here and there to make it fit the world that we live in right now. But um, in terms of like the actual structure of the show, like you said, it is very, very similar. So people who, you know, are struggling and and kind of depend on that um routine structure. Yeah, yeah. It can it can kind of put people at ease. And you know, there are there are so many exciting, vibrant numbers in this. It's fantastic because you can be taken away for a moment do you know what I mean like you're not kind of left thinking there are there are you know sometimes in theatre there can be quite long scenes which sometimes people can struggle kind of focusing on but with this we we do have a lot of numbers one after another that it just kind of grabs your attention and kind of draws you in and you've not just changed the the structure of the songs you've also changed the songs itself you know we go together is a much longer song than you'd have got in the film version. And it's a very inclusive song that has the whole ensemble part of it as well. And it's a really nice way that it's broken down and you can feel really part as an audience member of being one of the boys or being one of the girls. And you feel like an honorary T-bird or a pink lady. Talk to me about what Greece means to you and that whole structure of the show versus the film and how it fits into the world of Olivia growing up and watching Greece. Because I'm sure you'd have watched Greece many, many times beforehand. Yeah. So growing up, I think Greece was kind of the first introduction to musicals, singing, dancing, combining the two. Growing up watching the film, it was very much my first kind of introduction to, you know, listening to music, kind of having a, a very much a narrative in a song and following it along and having loads of different characters and there being dance routines. And that was so exciting for me. And that was kind of my first snippet of that. And 
it really, really excited me. And I remember watching it, you know, in the lounge or in my room or whatever. And and that would be the first time when I would honestly just sing along, dance, like like genuinely like the quote, like dance like no one's watching. And I just felt free. I just felt free to express, free to just let my hair down and just be my be myself or be a different character or just there was just yeah there was just a, a sense of release in it and I really really enjoyed that I really enjoyed that feeling you know school can be really difficult it can be really challenging and you know especially as, as a teenager growing up all the changes that happen all the people that you meet it can be really really hard so finding Greece it was kind of one of the only I had like a few DVDs that I'm the youngest of four so I had a few DVDs that I actually <laughs> owned um and they were kind of my property and um yeah so Greece was definitely one of those but I think now approaching this musical being now 27 it's got a whole new meaning it has still definitely I definitely still feel that sense of release and I feel excitement and and freedom and playfulness with it but I feel like especially with the character Sandy there is so much more to it now there are so many more layers and it's and I really really focus on that that female empowerment but also being brave and and sticking up for who you are as a person I feel like the world that we live in right now there are so many pressures and there are so many expectations we put these ex expectations on ourselves of who we should be and it can that can have a huge impact on your mental health and I feel like this time coming into Greece I've kind of I've really learned so much about myself and and accepting who I am and, and how I can apply myself to friendships and and work and you know just life and I think I think that's something that we really really want to focus on especially with the character Sandy because in the film she very much it seems like she very much changes for Danny but in our production she she doesn't she's she's confident and in who she is and yes there is a costume change at the end which is very iconic but she doesn't do that for Danny she does that for herself because I feel like I have kind of grown as a person since since doing this show in terms of just feeling like acceptance and confidence like in who I who I am as a person as well as how I can bring that to Sandy oh my god there's so much we need to unpick there so <laughs> let's go let's let's go backwards then Olivia to work forward and um, you're mm -hmm. talking about being brave and strength etc at school what were you like and how did you find school because I feel like a lot of the time when you are such an extroverted actress and you're playing these different characters and you want to be part of the drama club at school it doesn't fit the status quo of just wanting to sit in the corner with the cool kids all the time it's more that I want to go and have my lunch breaks in the drama room where I'm able to express myself so how introverted did school make you feel growing up? At school, I was really introverted. I, I was very shy in terms of like, I, I knew that I loved musicals and I loved to sing and dance, but that was something that I did at home on my own, not in front of anyone. Um, and the more I went to go and see musicals, I knew it was something that I wanted to do and I knew that I needed to step outside the box. But obviously when I was at school, I was with such a variety of, of kids who had very, very different interests. And I was like one of like very few people who actually liked musicals. But I was also, <laughs> I also didn't have a lot of confidence at all. So I was very quiet. Unfortunately, I didn't have the best time at secondary school. Um, I feel like it's very common growing up for there to be friendship problems. And I really struggled sometimes with the dynamic within certain girl groups. And sometimes I was the target of that. And it was really, really hard. And I think because of that, it knocked my confidence a lot. And I feel like being an actor, you know, you it, it's, really, it's really vulnerable because you're really putting yourself out there. So at school, I didn't actually do, like I, I did do for my GCSEs, I did do drama, but and I did do dance. But it was something that I wasn't, you know, this really confident person that jumped up any time there was an opportunity to sing in front of people or dance. It was something that like I did because I liked it, but I was very tentative with it. And, you know, from that point on and up until now, I've been so, so lucky to have such supportive family, friends, teachers who have really helped me gain trust in what I do 
and also have confidence to then go and do it. It hasn't been easy. And the person that I am right now going up on stage, you know, I still struggle with confidence like everyone does. The nature of our job makes it seem like we're all really confident people. And there are loads of people in the industry that are really confident and that's great. But like I said, it's a really, it can be a really vulnerable thing to do. And, um, and sometimes, yeah, sometimes we struggle with that and, and that's okay. I want to explore that vulnerability in a second when it comes to the audition process and the behind the scenes of getting those shows. But I just want to touch on the character of Olivia versus the Olivia who's sitting in front of me now and just the Olivia in personal life. You've become a bit of an Instagram influencer. You're a bit of a TikToker. You know, you're doing your lifestyle stuff. You're playing with these characters. You've gone from being part of the ensemble cast all the way up to being an understudy at waitress, but then actually getting the lead role in Greece, which is incredible, obviously. And that is now something that you can hold on for life, that you've played a lead role and hope it will lead to more lead roles and not going backwards into an ensemble. So my question is, how much are we now seeing and in, in everyday life, in the acting world, in interviews, the real Olivia Moore? And how much are we seeing a version still that is looking for acceptance on cross social media and in, in the acting world, if that makes sense? That's a, that, honestly, that's a really, really good question. I think, obviously, social media and my work and my profession, there is always going to be a level of privacy that I always withheld and rightly so everyone should you know but when it comes to social media yes obviously now I have finally decided to start posting content that is more fitting with other interests that I have I love interior design I love kind of I say fashion I don't necessarily think I'm a fashionable person but like I enjoy buying clothes styling them up and it took me time because I thought I had gained a, um, you know, a following from the shows that I had done. And, and I thought no one's going to want to look at stuff like that. And then last year, I just thought, no, like I, I want to be truthful to myself. And so that's why I started posting the content that I, that I started posting. And, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I feel like I'm able to kind of have another, another side to me that's creative, but in a different kind of sense. Um, but in terms of my social media and and how honest I like to be, it's something that hasn't wasn't always there. I think social media is still a very new thing. Growing up, you know, a lot of you know my siblings, most of them didn't really have social media when they were you know when they were at secondary school. I didn't have it when I was at secondary school, so it's still a very new thing. But when it comes to my mental health, like with with a lot of things that I feel are important and that can help people, I like to be honest I like to be because social media can be a filter and we're all guilty of showing off some parts that make it seem you know lovely but I also think it's so important to be honest with your struggles I've struggled with my mental health for various different reasons and I know so many other people that have and recently I I kind of was honest about the fact that I'd had I was seeing a performance psychologist which I still do because there was a period of time where I was really struggling with my anxiety when it came to performing and I I really wanted to do something about it so I got help and I was you know I've been speaking to someone and and the the, the change the turnaround I'm, I'm so happy I'm so proud of doing it and I'm not afraid to admit that I got help so I'm very very honest about that I was very honest earlier about you know when it comes to appearance and and growing up and I just I try and be as as honest as I can because I know that there have been times when I've been on social media and I've listened to a video or I've read something that I connected to or or even just thought oh wow I never realized that and I and I never all I feel is just like I feel pride and I feel respect for that person who has shared something because I feel like it takes a lot of courage to do that and I feel like there is so much kind of growth and ownership of that it's not a negative thing it's something mental health is something that should be spoken about even more I feel like we're definitely taking steps in the right direction but because of the nature of my job because of the shows that I've done there are a lot of younger generation that are looking at my stuff and granted they might not be interested in the outfits I wear but the um, the response I got from talking about my performance psychologist was so like overwhelming in such a wonderful way because people were like friend, friends of mine who didn't even know people who are in the industry they're going through the same thing kids that 
you know, are wanting to do it and they're struggling with the same thing. It was almost like some sort of connection where either there was like hope or there felt like there was like something that might be able to help them. And there was, you know, and I, I just feel all it took was a few stories on my Instagram and it got a conversation going and some people potentially went away and thought there's something I can do about this. So yeah, like I said, I always like to be completely open. There are obviously parts of my life that are private because they are private to me. Do you know what I mean? Like my family and, you know, my relationship and things like that. It's not, it's not necessary. It involves other people who are also private, but yeah, when it comes to things like that, I feel, I feel like I really want to try and push myself to, to kind of, you know, being completely honest about things that I struggle with and that I'm working on. And well done for number one, going actually seeking help and number two, actually being so open about it. You mentioned other mental health struggles that you've had in the past. What were they? Anxiety is kind of, you know, it comes in, it's, it's a very, it's a very <laughs> exotic thing. It can come in all shapes and sizes. After the pandemic, there was a huge, I think I've spoken to so many of my friends and, you know, health anxiety is another one. After the pandemic, after everything that happened, you know, we were so focused on on our well-being that that's a huge anxiety. Do you know what I mean? I want to make sure my family are are healthy. And so that's, you know, another thing. Anxiety in just in general, do you know what I mean? Like not just performance, but sometimes day-to-day life can be really stressful. Getting things done, even thing, little tasks of, you know, oh, I need to do the washing. I need to do this. I need to pick up, you know, small things can kind of build up. And sometimes it can feel like it's spiraling a little bit. And so, you know, I have seen a counsellor a short while ago after the pandemic and it was just good. It was just good to talk about things, no matter how big or small. It was just nice to just talk to someone who doesn't, who didn't know anything like about me other than what I'm telling them. It was just, it just felt like a weight was kind of being lifted and we were kind of, you know, kind of, delved a bit deeper into why I might be the way I like why I might deal with things the way I am the, why I might get stressed over certain things and it's all very very personal so whenever I talk about my counseling you know everyone's sessions are so different you know there's never there's never an identical therapy session but just talking is so powerful whether it's privately with your therapist or you know sharing you know the fact that you are going you know to get help and I think we're a generation, I think, now where it, there's more confidence with openly talking about therapy. Um, and so I'm definitely proud to, you know, to say I've, I've, I've got help because I know loads of people have and some people choose not to talk about it, which is absolutely fine. It's their, it's their decision. Because the industry we're both in is that as both freelance, I mean, look, you've got a contract to the end of October for Greece at the moment. So you've got that safety net. But there's always that paranoia and in the back of your mind that anxiety of well, what's next and you think about finances you know for example we'll talk about it a bit but you're getting married next year and so there's the pressure around all that about you know how am I going to afford a wedding what if I need to be working how am I going to take those days off work and I need my next role and does that put me off and then um, why am I not getting a, a casting and you know I've just been in Greece and why am I not getting a casting for another big role and it never stops and you're on this train the whole time and I have it all the time that I get so paranoid going my job's going to end tomorrow or in six months time this is over. And my friends are going like, they don't know how to handle it. And like, the question is really like, how, how, how do you navigate yourself knowing you're going to end up with that anxiety as well? Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm actually talking sense. No, 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 you are. You are. It's the thing is it's inevitable in the industry that we're in, especially as you know, um, being self-employed, that you're you're always going to be constantly trying to think ahead of what what even starting Greece I kept my job my two different jobs that I had before that kept me afloat I kept those jobs and what were those jobs the first job I'm basically like a conference host which um basically if if a if a company is having like a meeting they'll have someone there that kind of like make sure everyone's okay they've got the right people they're in the right room everyone's sorted um, but I do it online. Um, so I make sure that everyone's in the right Zoom rooms. Like there's, you know, quite big confidential meetings going on. Um, so I basically just conduct all of that and make sure it all goes smoothly. So I really, really actually, I love doing that. I started doing that in the pandemic. Um, it started off as kind of 
you know, a job that I didn't really have like a great deal of experience in, you know, the longer I spent doing it, I really enjoyed it. It was something to work on. I worked with completely different people. It was something not theatrical whatsoever, but it was honestly a breath of fresh air. And it was, it was without realizing just what I needed, not just because I, you know, it was a job, but for, for my own well being, it was, it was, it was great um and then and then the other one was I just I work um front of house at a Pilates studio um so I've kept those two jobs kind of going alongside going alongside because I'm preempting that at the end of October I'm not going to be in Greece so it's things like that and sometimes like it is it is hard and sometimes you can kind of get too far ahead of yourself sometimes you do have to just be like chill this is where I am right now let's just take it day by day because there are a lot of hours in a day and that can either be a lot of hours stressing about something that's actually like not arrived yet, or you can spend the day kind of writing, kind of maybe like writing a list out or kind of doing a mind map of like prioritizing. Okay. Like what, you know, think like figuring it out. And so, yeah, it is hard. Like it's like, it is, it comes with all its stresses. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm getting married at some point, which is another thing, which is another stress, even just, thinking about getting married I'm 27 and I still feel like I'm like 15 years old so getting married I'm like oh my god I'm becoming an adult like this is crazy um so even things like that cause stress that I never even thought of always wanted to get married and then when I got engaged I was like oh my gosh and then you're like oh my god I'm, I'm engaged like oh my god it's just one of those things you know um and I there are times when I find it more difficult. I know that sometimes my brain can think ahead to problems that could happen or could think ahead to situations. But sometimes you just have to try and slow yourself down. And I like to kind of visually see what's going on. What am I stressed about? How can I try and help? What can I do? I'm quite a proactive person. I will always be working to try and find work. And when I do have work, I work very, very hard at it you know, in the conference job that I had, worked my way up slowly, then started working on like the training team, which was kind of like a little promotion. And, and I felt so much like I felt like I accomplished so much with that. And, and although it was nothing to do with theatre, it still felt like such a huge thing. And I was really proud of it. And I'm still proud of it. It's like with anything, you know, it's, it's, it's stressful, even if you're working full time, you never know. It's just, it's just life in general can be stressful and it's just trying to navigate through it at a pace that is comfortable for you and I think gradually planning things like I said I like it visually I like to figure out I like to prioritize my brain sometimes I can prioritize like 10 things and I'm like this is this is not possible this is not possible and this is why I'm so stressed so I need to write, sit down and think right what do I need to do and that's why I started doing a lot of my content because it was something that was like a breakaway from thinking about the industry. I love performing. Performing is my life. It's what I've done since I was little. But I wanted something that kept me creative, but it was new and it was something that I really had passion in. Um, so with my content, I'm still learning how to use Instagram. I'm still learning. I'm learning how to use different platforms for editing and stuff. And, you know, I'll be going on YouTube, learning how to use things. And, and it takes time and it takes a lot of energy but it's something I can focus on. And sometimes when I'm feeling a bit stressed or I'm, I'll just go ahead and just do a little bit of that. And it gives me fulfillment. And whether that leads to other things, if that leads to other work, then fantastic. Oh, one bamboo, that was Olivia Moore. And you can see her in Greece until the end of October at the Dominion Theatre in London. It's next to Tottenham Court Road Station. Go and see it, it's so good. And the Dominion Theatre is one of my favourite theatres. There's always a great Christmas show that goes on there after. So do go and check out the theatre. And go and get to the theatre. Go to the West End of London. If you're not from London, go down there and go and see a musical. There's so many great shows out there at the moment. Go and check one out because you'll just know you're going to be in such a good mood. Other shows out there include Back to the Future as well. It's brilliant as well at the Adelphi Theatre. Go and check that out as well. You've been listening to Skin and Skin with me, Johnny. So if you like we heard, please do go and make the podcast, subscribe to it, share it. Tell someone you've listened to it and tell Olivia and me that you've gone to see Grease the Musical because you've listened to her on Security and Secure. On TikTok at Johnny Seafoot 92, on Twitter at Johnny Seafoot, on Instagram at Johnny Seafoot and Security and Secure podcast where you can find me. And I'll be back next week with another big celebrity to talk about their mental health journey. Until then, I'm Johnny Seafoot. Thanks so much for listening. Until then, thank you and goodbye.